we also have an update from Martin Stett, our deputy. Jack, while you were in hospital, a hunt was declared on all cops. It's like all the criminals in the city suddenly went savage. They're cornering officers one by one and beating them to death. Our boys have started refusing to ride out on court alone. When the situation is really bad, even two will refuse to go. Well, good news is that I don't really send them out that little. We now can improve our SWAT team to work four times a day. We can request out here. Okay, let's turn off the music because that's quite loud, isn't it? Get rid of that song. Yeah, how do I stop the music? Please stop the music. Okay, fine. Is this not a Christmas song? We can hire another police officer. Let's go ahead and hire George Mitchell here. Hire for B shift, or we can hire another one. Let's hire Zachary Goodwin for A shift. And investigators, we can hire another one. We can hire Jack Papworth, Sandra Narva, or Bertha Billups. Let's get, uh, now let's get her. That's good for diversity, isn't it? Let's hire for A shift. So what are we doing with killed? The mutilated body of Sue Barker was found in the sewer. It seems the homicide was carried out by several men who were strikingly cruel and inventive. Close. Let's see what the City Hall wants. Well, we can hire this. Yeah, just send that. What about investigations? We have got nothing really conclusive here. Could that music just please shut up? I'll turn down the audio then so I can't hear it. Okay, could they get rid of that bloody trombone or whatever it is? Let's. What else can we listen to? Careless Love, Original Salty Dogs, no. Old Merkbo, no. Blues for Mr. T. Fire in the Barn, but Bernard. White Russian. Whiskey Tinged, Back in Business. Yeah, that sounds more like us, doesn't it? Back in Business. We have a vandalism at the city centre. A passerby saw of three teenagers setting fire to a parked car. According to an eyewitness, you can still catch them. They're just walking down the street, not even in a hurry. So we probably have to send officers out with the actual requested number of officers instead of just a couple. We now have drug sales at the night club out here. King Louis night club. Club patrons found a man lying unconscious in the bathroom due to an apparent overdose. Let's get Marlow on it. He can handle that on his own. We can actually look into our investigations now and see who's working today. Well, he's not, are they detectives? So they will be less effective anyway. We can clear Sandstrom. Get Sandstrom assigned alongside uh, Mosler. Mosler? No, that's a car manufacturer. We have a theft at the Everyday Mall. A security guard noticed a suspicious group of teenagers hiding things under their jackets as they walked past the checkout. When he asked them to stop, the teenagers scattered in all directions and ran out of the store into the parking lot. The guard called the police and says they couldn't have gotten far. Let's get Van Dahl, Samadhi and Jane Austen on the case. The offender was caught. Officers were unharmed at the vandalism call at the city centre, so all officers got a nice little boost in their productivity. The ghetto is suffering from a case of reckless endangerment. An unidentified woman says that a strange surgeon is operating without a licence from the basement of her house. He hardly looks like a real doctor. He's old, maybe senile and always seems drunk. I mean, is that not what doctors do? Let's get those two, get Austin Powers and Kochi on the case. There's no rest for the wicket. We have our rape at the Chinatown dormitory. A student couldn't get into his room. It was locked from the inside and he heard muffled cries coming from within. It sounded like someone was raping my girlfriend. Either that or she just had a lover, you know. Okay, we now have an update on the reckless endangerment in the ghetto. In a dirty basement, a teetering old man is digging around inside a young man's ripped open stomach. Order the old man to move away from the patient, rush at the old man, call an ambulance. Well, let's call an ambulance first off. Civilians unharmed, apparently the whole operating thing didn't cause any injury. Meanwhile, we can actually send officers to the rape. Let's get Hugh Grant, Van Dahl, Jane Austen. No, let's get, yeah, let's get, no, let's get Bill Bailey on the case. We now have a crime in progress at St. John's Hospital. Apparently a homicide was committed. A nurse reports that she saw an elderly woman cut off her husband's life support system after a traffic accident left him in a coma for months. I know his case was hopeless, but it's still a murder, not the greatest sin of all, according to the nurse. The woman has blocked off the entrance to the ward. We'll send Jane Austen and Khan out there. They'll just try and talk to her a bit. The girlfriend was just having a special moment with her new boyfriend. So I was right, basically. That's good to know. 
We now interestingly have an assault with an offensive weapon, presumably the weapon that also swears out whoever is being attacked. Uh, a trucker just called in, he says a van stopped on the side of the road and three large men got out with shovels, then someone fell to the ground out of the back of the van. I think they had his hands tied up, they hit him in the head with one of the shovels and let him into the woods. Let's get Swat, Birch, Hugh Grant, Vandal, Samadhi, Bill Bailey, Kochi and Austin Powers on the case. The crews arrived by the assault with an offensive weapon. The van, although that's clearly a lorry depicted, is empty, but the engine is still warm. The area is silent and dark. Wade in ambush near the van. Enter the forest trying not to make a noise or turn a flashlight on and run into the woods. Let's enter the forest and be all sneaky and suspicious. Which worked. Nobody died. Officers unharmed. Civilians unharmed. Apart from getting hit in the shovel. No, getting hit with the shovel, not getting hit in the shovel. Oh, and now we have an armed robbery at the Sardius jewellery store. We have a grand total of two officers available. They'll just have to... Austin Key, Chief, this is a joke, right? We can't go out there alone. Pick someone else. Close? Okay, well then we'll just have to wait and see if they can get back in time. Which I don't think they will. Three, two, one... Okay, now you have to go all by your own. Come on, stop being bitches. Okay, you're being bitches, that's fine. You send a letter to the store owner, okay? Telling them what happened. It's kind of wrong, though, that you can't actually send officers out later to investigate the incident. Uh, we also have updates now on the hit and run. We have three new frames, which includes a lorry getting crushed underneath. We have a drug sales report going over here from Marlow. Someone's in the bathroom dealing drugs. We are at the end of the day. We now need to decide what we do with Sue Barker. We can declare her dead and officially declare the person dead. Or we can keep the body in the morgue and delay the paperwork. Now plainly we'll earn more money this way. But certainly going with just declaring them dead is by far the easier one. Because I can hire more officers in tomorrow. So that's quite clearly what I'm going to do. So we're going to end the day here. Impressive recovery, Mr. Boyd. I'm still not happy about how soon you're back to work. Well, not happy as your doctor. As a resident of Freeburg, I'm immensely grateful for it. Really? <laughs> Just don't tell anyone, or they'll pull my license. Well, thank you again for coming to see me at night. Oh, well, whatever you need, Mr. Boyd. Any doctor in this town would come running any hour, day or night, you can believe me. You're not suffering from headaches. It says here that you are taking painkillers after a back injury. But the prescribed dose is enough to... Uh... Dr. Krachinsky, you trust me? And, uh, sorry? Do you trust me? In what way, Mr. Boyd? You think I'm an honest and reasonable man, Doctor? You are joking, Mr. Boyd. Thanks to you, my wife finally agreed to buy a house here, and we've decided to have children. Thanks to you, I'm not afraid to visit my patients at night. I think you are the most honest and reasonable person in the city, Mr. Boyd. Great. You see, Dr. Krachinsky, uh, I'm an addict. Mr. Boyd, is, uh, is... Well, not a drug addict in the way you might imagine. I'm not some weak-willed junkie. Sometimes I stay clean so long that the tablets stay locked in the barn so long they go past the expiration date. But there are less pleasant stories. You know what? Let's... I once took a whole bottle right there in the barn, passed out in my own vomit. I almost choked. I fought the convulsions, somehow managed to break four ribs. For two weeks, my chest was so sore I wanted to die. But for those two weeks, I kept swallowing pills. Couldn't stop. If you want, I could... I once took a dose right before a party at home. My wife, Laura, had some old friends over from college. And I didn't take that many, maybe five or six pills, but it felt like I'd taken a few hundred. I passed out while I was carrying a tray of drinks. On the way down, I knocked over a set of Laura's scented candles. The house almost burned down. The repairs took a good chunk from our savings. Mr. Boyd, if you'll allow me, I just... Uh... As you can see, Doctor, I'm well aware of the seriousness of the situation and the possible consequences. But sometimes I need the pills. I don't use the word lightly. Sometimes I've got to work on cases with more energy than I've got. I can't do it without them. And I know you want me doing my job. 
So tomorrow, I want you to come here and bring me some tablets. Lots of tablets. Ten bottles. No, no, better fifteen. Yeah, fifteen bottles. The next three months are going to be extremely difficult, Doc. I would like to discuss your... Uh... You'll bring the pills, Doctor? Uh, yes, Mr. Boyd. Yes. Very good. Look, I don't want to trouble you any further. I bet your family doesn't like you running away with me at night. I bet they'd rather I was still in that coma. <laughs> Well, this is a bit awkward. I recorded the first part of this video way back in September sometime, and it's now, well, November. So I'm not entirely sure what has happened, you know, in recent times. In this gameplay, you will not notice any difference. Maybe you will. There's been a couple of game updates and that. But we're about to get in here in our little sports car, and we are going to work. We have Robbins. My kid's been causing trouble again. Can you call me in his school? Can you give some time to deal with this? Yes. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, we've got to be nice, you know. I was up all night reading. No, you can't stay at home. No, you've been reading. So you can give stripes one kind to an officer. Uh, but I'm not really seeing anyone. That oh, we do. Detective-wise, we can give a star to... And no. Oh, yeah, let's give it to bowling here. We like going bowling every now and then. And she got a nice little boost. We can start the day so we have a decent detective score. And that's the first thing. Oh, we got a record. No, a tape. Cassette tape player, that's the word. Cassette tape before him, we had a record player. This is a cassette tape player. But the first thing I want to do today is go into our investigations. And we will go in here, detectives. We have those working. We will just keep two detectives assigned to each case right now. Simply because we have so many bloody cases going. And we have Mole being lead on this one out here. So we'll give her Williams, who's quite, you know, crap. So we'll leave those two to do that. The hit and run over here. What do we have on that? We have basically nothing. They're all at home. So we can't touch that. But what about the drug cells over here? Frames in here. He's also home. But we can assign bowling here onto the case. At least for now. She can work that one today. An archive. Who else will have that one spinning for three days? So let's try and reopen this case here, and we can reassign someone else to work it. We can get, like, Debrido and Anthea Turner. They'll get cracking on that, and then we can just always grab another one. And now we have some stuff from the Mafia. We need everything for ourselves. City Hall, we can hire one more detective. Let's go in here and see. Well, we can hire her or him, and they're both quite old and feeble. So let's go ahead then and hire in... Well, they're both crap, really. I don't want to hire any of those. So let's hold off with our detective slot. We can hire one more police officer. And they are all crap, but we can go ahead and we can get Chris Durer in for shift A. We need to have a look at the roster anyway to see what they're doing. And see, oh, we now get a 10% increase. Yeah, they took away lots of our money recently, so we got some of it back now. So we can go in and look at the police station. We can see our roster. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, working on A shift. And on this, yeah, we need to shift some of these people around. So, Samadhi, you will be moved to B shift. And as will Hugh Grant. Uh, investigations wise, we are pretty even. So, we won't touch that. We have. Oh, we have another officer. So, let's hire you for A shift then. Okay. And we have a detective slot available as well. Uh, but we'll hold off and see if anyone's better. And we also have a homicide. Uh, two teenagers were sitting on some steps and smoking. A black man approached and asked for a cigarette. Go ask somebody else, monkey, the adolescents responded. The man grew rage, quickly pulled out a knife and drove it into the chest of one of the teens. I guess they learnt their lesson there. According to the other teenager who managed to escape, he took a cigarette and quietly sat down and started smoking. Well, we'll go ahead and we'll get Sarno, David Mitchell, Degar and, you know, this bloke here. They'll go down and they'll try and arrest that chap. Yeah, I know you're telling me one because we have people to hire, but we don't. They're all crap. I don't want to hire any of those. Maybe the ones we have tomorrow will be better. Oh, wonderful. We have a rape. Uh, Maurice Queen hurt from a neighbour apartment. A panicked female voice crying out help on being raped. Then, according to him, all was quiet for a few seconds. Then I heard something about a laundry detergent and bleach. And then some music started playing. 
So we'll get Cecil and George Best on the case. Off they go, on code to the rape. Our officers caught the homicide suspect, so we don't need to investigate it. We also have a assault at the Transformer Vault. But we'll go ahead and we'll wait and see if anyone will actually return to station because they only have Purdy available right now. And I would like to get at least two officers out there. Oh, and this is going to be tight. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, fuck. Okay, yeah, so it's only Purdy that's going out there. Chief, are you crazy? You're not going out there alone. So what about now? No, I just missed it as well. Yeah, they were a bit unhappy about that. So they can't go to that call. But they can respond to a city centre carjacking. Two teenagers were laying in wait for the paramedics to go their usual coffee break. And when they made off with their ambulance, we literally turned away for less than a minute. Okay, so we'll get a Sano and we'll get a Sano on the guys. So the rape, it turns out that Mr. Queen's neighbours had just bought a new TV and were watching some horror movies at full volume. And the offender escaped, obviously, at the assault because we didn't really have anything to do there. He didn't want to go alone, or she didn't want to go alone out here, Linda Purdy. It's Cleanliness Day in Freeburg, which will be widely covered by TV and media. Three employees from all the city services, including the police, should come out to help clean up. Well, we can give David Mitchell, Purdy and Degas a little trip down there. I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, we will have a couple of officers, you know, lacking uh, on shift, but we'll just make do. Carjacking report came in. Offender was caught and officers unharmed. And inspection, questioning. Three officers have, are needed for official questioning. This will take a few days in which time they will be exempt from all duties. Oh, piss off. We have, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, whatever. I can't do anything about that, can I? So we'll just have to accept that. So that questioning means that we only have three officers available now and we have a massive fight at a dump. About a dozen homeless people were shifting through a landfill for valuables and came across a case with a combination lock. While they were deciding how to split the contents, the group began to fight. A few of them have knives and our witness called the police and reports seeing them ready for fight to death. But we have three officers and they can go out with a paddy wagon. Our three officers managed to handle the massive fight at the dump. All by themselves. Nobody was hurt, everybody was arrested, and that was a pretty well done job, chaps. You can be proud of yourself. And we also have a public indecency at the Don Studio down here. An exotic dancer, Marisa Gomez, complained about a strange man in a raincoat. One of our rooms can be seen from the street. It's so that we can attract customers. Customers, not perverts. This isn't the first time we've chased this guy away. He comes here all the time, and he's wearing a raincoat no matter what the weather, and it seems like he's touching himself. Well, you'll have to wait until we get any officers available. You know, you have to complain to the... Oh, you're right next to the City Hall, actually. I mean, it looks from the marker thing like you are in City Hall. And that's one hell of a strip club, isn't it? Okay, well, we're going to have to grab the attempted carjacking. That obviously is a priority call. So we'll get Sanu and George Best on the case. Well, we'll have to leave this one just for now. We can't really uh, deal with that. It's a minor issue. Uh, there's no, you know, threat of life or any kind of that. So we left that. Yeah, whatever, they escaped. It's not really serious. They'll just call it in again at some point. And now we have a fight here at the King Louis nightclub. The bouncer at a nightclub refused entrance to five lowlives, hinting that flip-flops and sweatpants will chase off the woman. The lowlives got angry and decided to teach the bouncer some manners. A fight ensued. Well, we only have one officer available, so we'll just see if they actually return in time, and they probably won't. And he probably doesn't seem interested in responding on his own, right? No, yeah, he's not doing that. They're not doing solo riding anymore. So we've got a couple of reports coming in. No new frames found. And no new frames found. And Druck sells three new frames found. Ooh. Uh, no one was trying to steal cars. The vehicle security system is too sensitive and reacts to even the slightest of noise. But they're not ready yet, so we can't send anyone down there. The fight was... Somebody was killed, yeah... Call the government, no, the mayor, not the government, they can't do much, but call the mayor and complain about lack of funding at the police department. That's all you can do and that's all we can do. Really rather realistic, I think. We can go ahead then and end the day and see what we have here. We can go ahead and ask some people to stay in. We'll get George Best to stay in for work. Uh, we'll get David Mitchell. Uh, we can't really do that there. And yeah, we'll just leave the rest just to rest up. Mr. Boyd, I'm going home. Uh, do you need anything? 
Oh, no, no, don't go. I need to talk to you. I won't keep you long. I just need to make one phone call, and I'll be right out, okay? Of course, Mr. Boyd. Do you know what time it is? I didn't mean the... Uh, well, maybe I did. Guess I'm a son of a bitch. Jack? Good Lord, Jack, I wanted to talk to you. Was wondering if you'd call. How do you feel? I'm good, Mrs. Markham. Better than ever. The back pain is gone, the insomnia is gone, my hair is growing back, and my pathological indecisiveness seems to have run off somewhere. Jack, if you think I had anything to do with that... I'll waste no more time trying to think, Mrs. Markham. Every second counts. There's a lot to do. And one of those things is finding Laura. Jack, your tone is scaring me. Good. Turns out I have a knack for that. Scaring people. So, Mrs. Markham, I'm gonna look for my wife, and if you somehow get in my way, I'll send a special squad to your house. First they'll throw your dog in the fire, then they'll arrest you for prostitution. What? What the he Prostitution? Sometimes it's necessary to invent charges. It's not like I can arrest you for being an unbearable bitch. Emma, I need a detective. Oh, of course, Mr. Boyd. What shift? No, 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 not one of ours. A private detective. Oh. Um... I know that when your father stole your mother's jewelry and left her, you hired a private investigator. You didn't go to the police. Uh, you know, Mr. Boyd, it was a family problem, and we felt that it would... I understand perfectly, Emma. You don't need to explain anything. I'm in a similar situation. As you might have heard, my wife left the house. She's missing, you could say. Uh... I'm not sure what you're... I know you've heard all about it. I want her found, but I don't want the department involved. Same reason you didn't. So I decided to hire your private detective. Think you can arrange it? Oh, of course, Mr. Boyd. I'll call him and arrange everything. And don't worry, he'll keep it a secret. Fine. Uh, what do you need from me? Well... Just gather all the information that might be useful, and put it in an envelope, bring it to me, and I'll take it to him. Good. Okay, take the day off tomorrow and get a good night's sleep. The day after tomorrow, I'll have that envelope for you. <laughs> 